What would be especially useful in our conversation today? So I just want to know what you think is the most effective type of way of studying. Because so far what I've been doing is I've been watching the videos and taking notes on it and then trying to use those notes to help me while I take an exam under like stimulation, like under time, but I'm still using the notes as a supplement because I'm not fully there and I'm not completely ready and I don't want to like, of course I'm going to see a score that isn't amazing because I haven't prepped too much or like to the extent that I would wish to have prepped. And I know that if I try to use your notes to try to supplement it, it could help connect some dots. Sure. So tell me a little bit about what kind of what kinds of notes you're taking. So for, from um, so essentially, what I've been doing is just watching the videos and using notes to just see like what's the most important sections of the videos. Like um, as you, I'm in like the beginning portion of all of your videos. So you talk about a lot how you can practice a bunch of logic game because there are over 400 logic game LSAT questions. And it's just ordering, grouping, combination, and miscellaneous. And if you can group them by what type of question they are, then it is a lot easier to try and solve them because you have tricks that are pointing toward the specific type of logic games. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I said it. I agree with it. But to have that by your side as you're walking through an exam, I think is of somewhat limited usefulness. That's just really background information. That's not really a test-taking strategy. So, for example, in my logical reasoning videos, I'll talk about pacing strategies and how you might aim to complete the first 10 questions in 10 to 12 minutes, building up a time bank to apply to tougher questions later in the section. And so, if you're prone to not pacing yourself along those lines, but you want to, having that committed to memory or having it by your side could be useful. But the LSAT, it's not really a test of memorization. All of that foundational material is something to just familiarize yourself with it, but I wouldn't suggest you try to memorize it in terms of flashcards. It's to really just more absorb, and then you can use different diagramming strategies for ordering games or grouping games as you complete them, but that will become more apparent to you as you do lots of those games. Okay. So what do you think is the best way of trying to study, though? like trying to try and master the LSAT. Sure. So you have one of my study plans, right? Yes. So the underlying principle behind those study plans is what I call the LASER approach to LSAT studying. LASER is an acronym standing for learning, accuracy, sections, exams, and review. So learning is the theory. And that's where the, the video lessons in my course, that's what, that, that's what those will give you. They'll give you the basics. They'll give you the overview of the different sections of the exam and the various question types. You take that theory, you take that learning, and you apply it to specific questions where you you focus on accuracy, meaning you're working through questions untimed by type. So you might do several ordering games, then several grouping games, then several combination games, and so on. S is for sections doing individual timed 35-minute sections to work on your pacing. So that's where you might wanna say to yourself, I'm gonna do the first 10 logical reasoning questions in a certain amount of time, maybe about 10 minutes, or I will do the easier game in less than 8.45 to have a time bang to do the tougher game in closer to maybe 10 minutes or 11 minutes. Do you have any tips for going to the tougher games? Because um, in the tougher games, I kind of just read them and I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? How do I begin to understand this? Because I can't find like any, well, I can find some keywords, but I could find keywords of different like avenues for the games. Yeah, I don't think that keywords are going to tell you that it's a tough game or not. It's really about what are the tasks they're asking you to perform. So as you said, ordering, grouping, combinations, and miscellaneous, think about what tasks the game is presenting you with. And that will dictate what direction you take it in. And I'd focus on the, the simple, pure types first before getting into those tougher ones. I have a list of the tough ones I can send you where it's basically every weird curveball game from test number one up to present. But focus on the foundation first if you're just getting started and deal with those later. So how do you think that you should space yourself when it comes to the different exam usage? Like, should I begin at exam number one or should I begin like somewhere in between? so that I don't like run out of material, but also I'm not using exam material that is not particularly useful. Of course, yeah. So the exam has evolved over time. More recent is more relevant. 
Now, when are you taking the LSAT? I'm taking it in July. Oh, so you've got time. Awesome. Yeah. So if you've got time, you could theoretically work through every exam ever released. I don't think that you need to, though. You might start with the exams in the 50s, build your foundation there. Then once you've done that, get into some of the older stuff because you'll have time for it. And then finally conclude with the newer stuff. So start with the 50s, then do everything in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, then come back and do individual sections in the 60s, then do full-length exams in the 70s and 80s. And just to circle back to that laser approach to studying, after you've done those individual sections, then you want to work on full-length five-section timed exams. But that is only after you've done the first three steps, learning, accuracy, and individual sections. Okay. And then finally, the last step is R for review, which is too often neglected, but is incredibly important so that you can avoid making the same mistakes again. So how do you stay motivated during this entire very long process? Well, you could look at it a couple of ways. One is, what's your best case scenario three to five years from now? If things do work out, you get the score you want, you go to the law school you want. And then three to five years from now, what's your worst case scenario? So you'll run the fastest when you're running towards something and away from something else at the same time. So if you're stuck in a job you don't like, or you face the prospect of, of pursuing a job you wouldn't like, but getting that top LSAT score and getting into the law school of your dreams would help you get to a career that you do want to practice, then that could be sufficient motivation. Then there's also all sorts of little hacks like putting a photo of your top law school choice on your background, for example, is like something else you could do or visit the law school you want to go to to make it a little bit more real for yourself, a little more concrete. How do you try to make it so that you can ground yourself in this studying because a lot of the times I'll begin studying and then I just, I feel instantly like de like diminished in my value because I'm like, how, how am I watching all of these videos and receiving this prep that is amazing and not grasping at all, you know? Well, be patient with, you, with yourself. Realize that it could be a long slog. This is a tougher exam than any other grad level exam like the GMAT, the GRE, the MCAT, and certainly tougher than any exam you've encountered up to this point. And so just respect it for what a, a monster it is, but at the same time, respect the complexity that goes into making it and realize that it will take a long time, but you have more exams available to you than anyone else ever has in history. You have nearly a hundred of them and you've got plenty of time to make it happen. You've got till July, that's several months. So mm -hmm. recognize that just you're breaking it down step-by-step, bit-by-bit. And that's also what the day-by-day -day study plan is doing for you. Don't focus on all the pages of the plan or all the weeks ahead of you. Just focus on getting through that day's work. And then if you have a little extra time, go ahead to the next day or review something else. So what do you think is the best way to make sure that as you're balancing life and school and studying to just not get burnout so bad? Well, how much time are you looking to devote to this per day? I've been trying to devote at least seven hours per day. That's a lot. <laughs> Should it not be seven hours per day? Well, that's, that's your, your question right there. Burnout, I mean, that's a little bit too much. It's a little bit on the heavy side. I, I would lighten up a bit. Okay. What amount do you think would be a good study period for you? Since you've got several months until July, I think three to four hours a day would be more than sufficient. You don't plan to keep up that pace for the next seven, eight months, do you? See, that's the burnout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, no, the light. I'm so sorry. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's, I'm in a classroom, and when you don't move a while, the classroom lights shut off. Totally, I hear you. <laughs> so when, you're, when do you think is the moment that you feel that you would be able to know is if you're able to start performing under the exam simulation? The easiest way is just try it out. Once you've gone through those stages, learning, accuracy, and sections, then you're up to exams and endurance, which is where you introduce the five section timed exams. You try one and see how it goes. Most likely it won't go the way you want it to, but recognize that it's just the first of several exams you will do like that. I want you to do at least 10 full length timed exams before test day. So the first one will just be the first trial. Of course, you'll be totally fried by the end of it. Your pacing may fall apart, but there will still be many others you do to figure out whatever is not going well, figure out what to change up for the next time.
each subsequent attempt, you'll get better and better. What do you think is the best way to find out what your learning style is? Because when I, as I'm doing this, I know that like talking out my issues and like talking out things is how I learn the best. So how could I apply that to LSAT prep? Well, find a study buddy, find a tutor, find a study group of some kind, and th then you'll have the space to talk that out. And if there's no one around you where you live, look online. But yeah, you can definitely find people who will talk about this with you. That's one of the wonders of the internet is that although people may be isolated in their individual social circles where they're studying, there are many communities. I, I have a, a Facebook group for the LSAT Unplugged community where you can go and post questions, find study partners to meet over Skype or Zoom or phone or what have you. And that's a great way to, to learn it better because you learn a lot by explaining it to someone else and you can also benefit from what others have to teach you. I really appreciate so much that you're able to do this and that you're even able to offer this. It's, it, I, it's unbelievable. And I just want you to know that I'm completely grateful for it and I'm trying my best to make sure that I use as much of it as possible. It means uh, a lot to me. I really appreciate it. Of course. I mean, with all of the amazing things that people have said about you, it would be stupid of me to not, you know? <laughs> um, also, on the LSAT, I like read something that it says that the logic games aren't cumulative, but I know that in your videos you explain that like if you have something that can help you understand like how local question one works, then maybe it could help with like a central question like five or something. Yeah, so what they're, what they're saying there is that if L is on slot three for a certain question, that diagram that you draw as a result of that local limitation is a valid diagram regardless, but L will not be fixed on three for the subsequent questions necessarily. Oh. That's all they're saying. I thought that they were saying like, if you find something out in question number one, that doesn't mean that if the, the thing that you found out will be applicable to the rest of the questions. No, all valid scenarios are still applicable, assuming they haven't fundamentally changed the rules of the game. Okay. I think that those are all of the questions that I have so far. I'm still trying to completely understand this beast, as you put it. Uh, thank you so much. The biggest insight that I've got is understanding how to completely attack it through laser. Because before this, when I had looked at the study guide, it kind of just looked like, it looked like a separate monster attacking me from the LSAT. And now it looks like something that I can try and digest a lot easier, if that makes sense. Totally. Study sheet now makes sense because before it was another monster like the LSAT. <laughs> Great. Well, I'm really glad I was able to help. Please keep in touch and let me know if I can help in any way as you move forward. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Take care. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.